Yeah, guys, welcome to lesson number 70. And today we're studying two books. Uh, that is Second Peter and Jude. Um, they are quite short books uh, and they are closely related and um, it's easier for them to be studied again uh, together. So we've already covered all these books here. Um, and today we are doing Second Peter, oh, First Peter, which, which we did last week. So today we're going to do Second Peter and, and Jude. Uh, so time-wise, uh, on our timeline, we are still in that period um, in the 60s. Um, and I think, okay, this one must have been an era because we must be somewhere around 65 um 65 AD. Uh I've taken you through already last week. Um during this time, uh Paul's fifth mi uh, mission, uh when he was released from when he was released from Rome and he was acquitted and he was found not guilty. And then after that, that's when Nero started the fire. Um, and at Rome, and uh, he accused the believers. And then that is when uh, the persecution by the Romans started. Um, uh, the most um, uh, one great persecution of believers and the Jewish people that um, that was ever recorded, and uh, I've told you all about it. Uh, but Peter was writing First Peter to to the scattered believers um, that are scattered all around, and then he's calling them, he's speaking to them as if they are Jews. Uh, but he was actually um, writing to believers. So now this Second Peter, he's writing to the very same people. Uh, we we he he mentions it as well in the in the letters. Uh, and now because of this persecution, uh, he knows he's going to die now. And you know, I is just writing his last letter and trying to deal with this issue. Uh, so in the first letter, actually, I was writing to uh to um to tell the believers how they should behave. Um in the midst of, uh, of the persecution. Uh, and here today, um, he's gonna be dealing with um, false teachers, you know, because now this has become a real big problem. So on the outside, you've got the Romans that are persecuting the church, attacking it from the outside. And now the devil is starting to penetrate from the inside. Uh, using uh, using the false teachers, uh, and I believe these are actually uh, Gnostics. Um, do you guys remember what Gnosticism is? Uh, who can tell me what Gnosticism is? It's one of those words I can't say. Uh, we should know. Excuse me, guys. Let me just close this window. The this noise coming from outside. So who? who who or what? What is Gnosticism? Who are the Gnostics? What is Gnosticism? What is Gnosticism? Um, is it not the guys that believe um there is no God is not bad. He's all about good lifestyle, good things, self love, and all that. Yeah, it it boils down to that, um, and that's why you'll see uh, Peter and Jude will be addressing such kind of issues. Um, but Gnosticism, guys, you have to know. I've been I've been emphasizing this um, for a long, long time. Please watch those videos that um, that I've done extensively on Gnosticism. Because from now on, as you can see now, uh, you know, we're going to be dealing with it a lot. 
um in the next books as well to come it's you know by the time when we get to john the gospel of john that we we did not study with the other three gospels you know you have to fully understand it because we uh it's not going to be easy to interpret and get the right messages without but basically gnosticism uh they they believe in the knowledge that um that if there is actually some big God, uh, the one they call, uh, but then he emanates these eons, uh, and these eons, Christ was one of them. They like speaking about Christ cons consciousness. Today we call them um, New Age. Um, and this... Um, uh, this, this eons... Uh, they come and they give us um, a knowledge on how to uh, transcend the body. So their biggest belief, which please you must know, is that the spirit is good, the spirit is perfect, uh, but we are spirits, we are trapped in this body. These are the kind of people, even today you'll hear them, they will say that we are spirits, we live in the body and we possess uh, the soul that that is Gnosticism, you know. Uh, Jewish believers they don't have that. You don't find that uh, in the Bible. It's Gnosticism. So, you know, because the body is bad, you know, that's why previously we also discussed. Uh, it means Jesus could not have come in the flesh, you know, uh, because the flesh is bad. Uh, some they will even say that Christ was. Um, as a normal human being, uh, a child of Joseph, a biological child of Joseph and, and Mary, uh, until he was baptized, that's when the Christ spirit came into him. And, you know, uh, and all these sort of people, they believe in spirit, spirits, and they disregard the body. So this, this now brings the point that um, Rachel is mentioning to say now if the body really cannot be saved or it's if it's not good it doesn't matter what to do with it you know um so that's why people will be sensual uh they will eat anything they will sleep around sexual immorality it's like at its peak and these people are even in the church uh if you go and read the the, the history that i've done there on gnosticism you realize that they were actually even the largest, they grew, they grew to be the largest group, you know, like all cults um, uh, do, you know. So now Peter has to address these issues now, you know. And and, and it's a big problem when, uh, when Christianity moved away from uh, being a Jewish uh, religion now because all this... Um, Gentiles, they're coming in, they're bringing in their own things. I told you that it uh, Gnosticism actually boils down to Greek philosophy um, from Plato, you know. So, yeah, people always bring in their own things. You, you look at all the cults. People don't want to repent and let go of their things and come and take this Jewish... Um, faith with the Jewish God and the Jewish everything, they always bring their own things, you know, and this is why we are studying this also to unlearn, because we also received the gospel uh, from from the West and they brought in too many of their things that are not Jewish and beliefs, and one of those is this very same one of um, you know, spirits and, and, and separating the spirit and the, and the bodies and making one to be more important than the other. Um, so, yeah. And then the other book of Jude, uh, it's written by Judah, uh, which is Judas in Greek. And we know that um, he is the brother of James uh, and, uh, and our Lord Yeshua. Um, you know, it's been said that, look, um, he had to alter his name. Uh, and now it's called Yud for obvious reasons. 
because there is another Yuda uh, who has betrayed um, the Lord. You know, so there's also um, an issue because now with Jude and 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 Second Peter, uh, as I've mentioned, there's two there's too much similarities, uh, especially when you're getting to so-called chapter two of Second Peter and the whole of Jude. You know, it's like okay, this is like <laughs> these guys are saying one and the same thing. Um, so it's believed either one borrowed from the other, or um, you know, plus these letters you can see they've just been circulating. Or uh, in First Peter, we actually even had Peter uh, making a comment on um, on Paul's letters uh, that are being dis being distributed around. So you know, once the apostles write these letters, you know they're going to be scripture in uh, for us later on, but. But people are, you know, they are the authority, these guys, and they get, um, let me use the word revelation, maybe straight uh, from the Christ himself. Uh, and Jude, Jude was actually not originally, he was not part of the 12. Uh, you remember that the brothers, they really did not believe um in Yeshua, um, but uh, one of the qualifications of being an apostle is when someone has um, um, has seen the resurrected Christ, and the resurrected Christ gave him the message uh, of authority, and then this is why when they write this stuff, uh, it, they their letters become. Uh, authoritative and we have taken them and we have made them our um, uh, into into scripture so um there's another issue now with these uh letters uh, 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 uh who, who has read who has read any of this uh anybody read read which ones these any any of the two, yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Um. What have you noticed? Um, something strange in these books. Um. Have you? Did you notice something unusual of um that uh they're writing and it's like. Okay, um, where did this come from? Strange, not really, maybe um, different from the others that we've read, I could probably say they mention, uh, I think these are the only two that mention um, writings like about angels and pits of hell or well I said you know like I, I saw that like Jude there's a reference from another book that's not in in our traditional scripture that's on Jude and then and and then Peter also it was a similar writing to Jude at least with Jude Jude did say that like Enoch said, but Peter didn't say that, but he mentioned a similar thing to say even the angels, I mean, the angels have been put into uh, this place and reserved for judgment. So I think those are the only two similarities that were, I wouldn't say weird, but I think different from the other writers. Yes, you're right. That That was the strange thing because not only that, that, that does he give the account, he also mentions what Enoch has said. And then the next thing you're checking, look, that is not in the Bible, you know. Um, and the thing about uh, Moshe's body as well, that uh, the Satan, um, you know, was contesting for Moshe's body. 
with Michael. You're like, when did that happen? It's not in the Bible. Um, yeah, and it's because they are using um, some Jewish tradi tradition sources uh, that are not uh, canonical. Um, canonical means that uh, they are not in the Bible. Um, uh, canon, they were using some form, form formula of measurement. Uh, canon is measuring uh, to decide uh, which books go into the Bible. And remember that our Bible um, was compiled by, by the Pharisees. Um, and I think it, they only managed to put the last books and confirm the canon about a hundred years after, after Yeshua has even left. So, um, uh, but then um, uh, some books like Enoch, they were not canonized. Uh, and then there's another one called the Ascension of Moshe. So you'll find that um, those people like the Catholics, uh, they've got these extra sources of books in their Bible, uh, and they'll call that, it's called Apocrypha, you know. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, advise anybody to, to read and study those, uh, because there's a lot of them, uh, and some of them are full of, of nonsense. Um, you know, this, so this is why you'll find Catholics practicing some other weird things and and we wonder where do they find them from. They come from those books. But as for Enoch, um, Enoch, Enoch won. Because uh, there's three of them. Uh, Enoch, I still somehow believe that it's the only book that I think should have been um, in the Bible. Uh, not only because these guys are referencing it, but Yeshua also uh, referenced Enoch. Um, uh, one of the instances, it was when he was speaking about, when he was asked about marriage by, I think it was the Sadducees, you know, trying to trap him about the resurrection. And they said, if a man marries a woman and he dies, and you know, according to the to the culture, the brother will marry the wife. And then that brother dies, and the younger one marries that wife. So whose wife is she going to be? Um <laughs> when when people are resurrected on the other side. So Jesus said these words. He said, the problem is that you do not know or you do not understand the scriptures. And then he quoted Enoch. Uh, he said, don't you know that, um, you know, there's no marriage on the other side. We are going to be like angels. Uh, and that is the stuff that you get in Enoch, um, because Enoch actually told us about what happened to those, uh, the angels that uh, slept with the women in, in Genesis, uh, and they produced this, what our Bibles are calling giants, uh, but the, 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 the Hebrew word that they use is the Nephilim. Uh, they produced this Nephilim, um, an abomination uh, because angel and humans they're not supposed to to mix it's the same as um animal and and human you know so uh so yeah it is that bad to to god uh but in genesis we only we are only told that they gave birth to those Nephilims and the Nephilims started eating people and killing people because now they couldn't be fed, they couldn't be satisfied. And there was just violence and God got angry. 
and this is when he brought um <clears throat> uh the flood and he drowned them it ends there doesn't tell us much but enoch uh tell us a bit a little bit more detail that those angels were actually uh i think they were like about 200 of them uh and they were led by someone i think called Hazaza or something something and they've decided they talked to each other to say no look uh are we doing this uh, or what you know but they know the consequences and they decided to do it and they slept with the women they they taught them witchcraft and all these things that that we find later on they are forbidden um you know um magic uh, horoscopes all these things and they also taught women how to do makeup you know um so all those things were not there before so god was angry and then uh, enoch tells us that they um, those angels were actually taken and they've got a, another compartment um where they were they are held under the earth here. um i'm not sure i don't think it's sheer wall because sheer wall is for human beings um the unrighteous they go to a place of torment and the righteous go to uh abraham's bosom or what we call paradise or garden of eden it's they're down here but then these other angels they are taken into some it's other holding hello tartarus yeah tartarus uh because now we get to hear about that place from from this book here tartarus and that is that is greek uh the other words that they also use is the abyss um uh the bottomless pit um so it's a holding place and they are chained there uh so now jude uh, enoch actually gives us more details because he goes there and he talks to them and then he's got an, another angel he also goes and and, and he sees Cain, um abel as well um and everything is explained to him um and and those people actually uh when he was asking about those angels um god explained to them say look i did not give you wives unlike men uh, or human beings you know because you you are eternal you 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 don't need to reproduce you know, man needs to to reproduce. So I gave him wives. I gave him. I gave them uh, wives. You know, uh, but you you are angels. You don't marry. You see. So this is actually what uh, Yeshua was quoting from. Because, um, and during during even his time, even um, from the times when the the Jews returned from um, from Babylon and Persia. Oh, these sort of sources, they were there. Um, and the Tanakh was there, but um, it was not finalized to say, uh, these are the only books and those other ones we are rejecting. So um, there are some books that are just good only for reference, uh, like Enoch. Um, uh, the other one is... Um, um well, what do you call those uh Hasmogens, those those priests that started um to fight against the Greek during that 400 years missing in the Bible? The Maccabees. So there is another um uh uh uh, first and second Maccabees, uh, the Catholics, they've got it. So for that information of history, I wouldn't say it, it is, it is a, it's a, it's a bad source to read, but the rest, you'll find some seriously scary things and things that are, um, um, things that actually, um, they contradict the Bible. 
uh, and it was decided that, look, these are not inspired in any way uh, by the Holy Spirit. You know, so Enoch is also not inspired. Um, but when they are making all these comments and Jesus called it scripture, you know, I thought, look, as an exception, I think we can read first Enoch. Uh, the other ones, uh, second and third Enoch, I wouldn't recommend them. We don't even know who wrote those. You know, you know, people write and they use somebody's name and stuff. So you must be careful. A lot of uh, non, uh, un, un, um, un canonical books, they also use both Peter and all these apostles and stuff. But um, there's also some of them are Gnostic. You know, gospel of of Thomas and Mary, gospel of you know all those. So I wouldn't recommend them because I've had someone even in our class when we're making comments, and um, the person mentioned something as 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 a fact or truth from the Bible, and I realized no, this is not from the Bible. It's coming from those other sources, and that's the danger of of studying those sort of things. You know, you end up not knowing which part comes from the Bible and which one uh, doesn't. So I wouldn't recommend them. Um, so yeah, so Peter now is writing. Um, uh, on the first letter, he wrote them to how to deal with the persecution from uh, from from the Romans. But now, now he's, he's teaching them um, how to deal with false teachers and and all this evil do us in the church, you know. So Gnosticism is the big issue. And then obviously, as I've, we've been showing throughout that, look, um, uh, the gospel is about the return of Christ. That is where the hope is. That's where salvation is. You know, everything is about it. Without the return of, of Christ, you know, there is no gospel. And this is why the resurrection is the most important thing. Um, and because it means that we will be resurrected, you know. So now all these Gnostics, they they will not believe in that. They will, you know, they will counter, they will teach their own um, false gospel. So uh, I think we may as well go to um, to the scripture now. Um or any questions in the in the meantime? Yeah, we're going to read some really uh deep things here. Um and yeah, these books, yeah, these books are quite <laughs> they are quite uh deep. Um and no wonder why um a lot of people they don't really a lot of preachers they really don't preach on this uh, and one of the things uh, that i think i can even mention now is that when peter is writing this about the false teachers uh, and jude as well um jude especially you know saying all this stuff about uh the false teachers but then uh they don't tell us what must we do you know, uh, I wish Nom Fundo was here. You know, because I think we've we've had um, some discussions uh, around this this whole thing. Because now you are telling us about them and their lifestyle and everything, and you know, but then you are not telling us what what we must do. You know, to them or about them. You know, so most of the stuff it's about um um what what do we ourselves do in order to be protected from them? So I think that is what um the whole solution it's going to be, but you'll see it when we uh when we read. So our reader, uh Smangela, um Let's do this. Okay. I need. A, I need. To, I also need a clock. I'm. I'm not seeing the time here. 
I'm not seeing. Well, what's the time, by the way? They, let me. Why does this have? It's not a time. 1538. 1538, yeah, okay. Yeah, you may start while I'm also looking for the time. Yeah, you may you may start. Simeon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith of equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted us granted to us his precious and very great promise, promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire for this very reason make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election, for if you practice these qualities, you will never fail. For in this way, they may be richly provided to you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please scroll up. Yes, sir. Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you know them and are established in the truth that you, you have. I think, I think it right, as long as I'm in this body, to stir up by way of reminder, since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ has made, Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me, and I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. Yeah, so you see, he's speaking as well about um, about his death. So he knows he's going to die, and um, God is faithful enough to, to actually let these guys know, even when their time is, has come. Uh, but yeah, so you can see that here, there is already all this... Um, uh, corruption within the church you know, uh, and he's trying to help the church to say, look, you are not going to be like them. You know, we need to be able to exercise self-control and godliness, you know, those kind of topics that are never preached about these days in our, um, in our churches. And, you know, because most of it, most of the churches, they are new age. They are actually, uh, a new age is just a more developed uh, Gnosticism and what these guys are actually, what Peter here uh, is actually dealing with. Uh, you know, they become uh, unholy and they they do all of these wicked things that you'll see being mentioned even in the next um, chapters. But again, uh, as it's been repeatedly mentioned and discussed, you know, uh, true Christianity is shown through love for one for one another. Uh, love is like the the main thing, and brotherly affection, you know, taking care of each other and loving each other. Um, you know, it's 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 those kind of qualities as and as has been overly emphasized in all of the books that we have read. Yes, I may continue. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received yeah. honor so, and glory from the Father. Oh, sorry. You see, uh, these cleverly devised myths, you know, it's all those 
uh, Gnosticism kind of things. You know, people are able to even manipulate even scriptures and try to make those things to be um, to be true. Uh, but but those things are very false. You know, the same way today you also find people bringing in their own, um, uh, as I've said, that people don't want to change from their own cultures and, and sinful um, beliefs. They rather just bring them into the church and um, sort of mix them with the church uh, doctrines. So that's why you'll find these African ancestral uh, beliefs they are also within the church you know people will add so called ancestors um ancestral worship in um you you see in churches like zcc and these rivers what what i don't know this and they become very big and they are cleverly uh, you know um done craftingly uh and to make everything like everything belongs in the same uh, pool. Uh, but these ones here, they preached only the gospel. And this is why we've got these letters. And this is why we've got this Bible. So that even as we are able to fight against uh, uh, heresy or false teaching. Uh, yeah, you may continue. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was born to him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed, to which you, to which you will do well to pay attention as, a, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so another thing, these false teachers, the um, thing is they, they, I mean, Gnosticism, Gnosticism is telling, it will make the Jesus, because he's in the flesh, not to be God. You know, and this is why um, Simeon, because he was there, uh, you know, and when Jesus was being baptized by uh, by John, John the baptizer, you remember that um, actually uh, Andrew and and Bo Simon they were actually first disciples of of John. You know, so they were there when Jesus came in. Uh, and he was baptized, and God himself confirmed uh, Jesus as his son, you know. So Gnostics, they want to say Jesus is actually um, Joseph's son, you know. And um, while even I'm, I'm on this, this is why you're going to... Um, I realize that they they, they 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 also have got many eons, you know, which makes uh, Jesus not to be unique and to be God. Uh, and you know, um, they would believe. I've I've also watched even recently a lot of New Age people. Um, they believe like people like Bo Confucius, Bo Bo Muhammad. Uh, Jesus was just like one of them, boom, you know, all these great guys that um, receive great knowledge and understanding in, in religion and they, you know, and they've got great followership. Um, I've, I've, uh, uh, it's, they, they, they practice this, um, even even the med even the med med meditation you know to try and get out of the body you see uh, like Confucius and, and and all these guys that started Buddhism and all this stuff you know uh so they believe that these guys they've reached some certain uh kind of level uh of defeating the body and they call it the Christ consciousness uh and if you 
if you have had even people that used to go to work for the devil, uh, when they give their testimonies, you realize that the devil is is lying to them that Jesus was just one of of the of these great uh, people. Uh, they can also be uh, used. Think they use the term ascending masters. You know, uh, there's a lot of people that believe they will grow in Satanism, and you know they will reach that level of being ascend ascending masters. Uh, you know, it's a form of a, like if you follow these things of um the Illuminati and stuff. You know, you reach you reach that um. 33 degree uh, masonry level, you know. Um, there's a term that they use, man, in um, that the devil lies to them about. I'm trying to, Grandmaster, what, what? There's a certain term that these people are called, you know, when they reach the highest level in Satanism. And they report directly to the devil and, and, and everything. But they are deceived. So Satan tells them, no, Jesus was just one of them. Hey, he has reached this level. Uh, you know, and that's not the season for you because it's there as well too. And it's cleverly done. And remember, you know, you are being shown things. There are people that are practicing, especially the youth. They are practicing um, uh, astral projection they get out of their bodies they go so this is why even when someone like muhammad says oh i've, I've seen an angel uh gabriel uh and he took me through and he gave me this you know they never deny jesus that's why you will find islam also believes in, in you know it's it's cleverly done but those people they actually had um true experiences but the problem is that when you don't know scripture, anyone and anything comes and says, I'm God, I'm Jesus, and you're taken and you're shown all this. That's why you also hear a lot of people. I never deny that they've um, they've had true experiences, but a lot of people will say, oh, I, I went to hell. Oh, I went to heaven. They, they, they've, they've had true experiences, but I don't believe they've, they've been to any of those places. You know, because when you read here in scripture, they, uh, they contradict scripture. Although many times they try to come and butcher something from the scripture to try and make their, you see, it's that cleverly thing that, that they do. They try to get something from the scripture to to try and, um, uh, and make their thing authoritative, you know, or true, but it's not. You know, so this is why we need to study the scriptures. This is what these guys are actually going to boil down everything to. You know, uh, that study the scriptures. This is how you're going to actually defeat. Um, you're going to defeat um, these false teachers. Otherwise, the their things are very um, uh, nicely um, crafted. You know, and a lot of these guys, they've got big followership because they speak spiritual things and all of this stuff. Uh, and then there's some, you know, it's toned down. Today's new age, people like Bo Oprah and, and Bo, you know, uh, Bo Joel Austin, you know, there's, you'll hear them speaking about, look, um, there's many ways to God. I was also disappointed. I don't even know if that was... Um, who was that most popular evangelist in in America that just passed away? Billy Graham. You know, uh, I don't know if that was a real Billy Graham because he changed when he was getting older uh, or they just cloned him. You know, you never know with, this, with these things. But he went on CNN and uh, when he was asked that, look, do you believe that Christianity is the only way. Uh, even Joel Austin has asked all this stuff. Um, do you, you believe it's the only way and all these people, uh, Islam and, and all of these other people, they're not going, going to go into He says, no, these are good people and you know, you cannot judge. Uh, you know, 
and um sort of agreed like Joe Lord said and 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 uh and opera that there are many ways to God. There are many paths to God. You know, Jesus is not the only way. So yeah. And this new age is going to be the greatest religion because it, you know, um and we we are being led to that one day. Uh, and in these last days, we're going to need to know the truth. Um, you may continue. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there were false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their sensuality, and because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their condemnation for long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. If he did okay. not spare them... Yeah. Um, if... because it's, now, now it's going to get deeper, so um, there's a lot I would need to, to explain. Um. Uh, but I also like that in their greed they will exploit you with, with 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 these guys. You realize that they say all these nice things, and then the next thing they take the offering. The next thing you're buying them jets and 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 whatnot, and you know they got big followership. You know, there's there's nothing there's nothing new, and this is how we actually were able to even judge the true. Um. Uh. Apostles and the, and the true preachers, you know. Remember, Paul also had to deal with those super apostles that charge. They charge when they're coming to preach, and people must pay and all that, and you know. But somehow, um, people just follow them. Uh, but their destruction is there, you know. Um, uh, it's already, it's already guaranteed. Just like those angels. Now, it's those angels that are just discussed um with you about uh from genesis you know um they were casted and they were they are in chains in, in 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 gloomy darkness so you see that's another thing about that place when you hear about hell uh, i'll come to that word hell but it's tartarus uh it's gloomy even 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 the the so-called hell where the places where the unrighteous are going there now in Sheol, it's a gloomy dark place you know there's no fire and all those things that people keep telling us uh been to hell i saw people being thrown into the fire yes it's a place of torment and it's it's hot but it's gloomy and dark like a cave you know but that there's fire and there's demons and you know now, uh, I've done a video, I should have just shown you, I've done a video on all these places that are underneath the earth, you know. Um, now, this one here, uh, the problem is our, is our translations and our language of English, you know, they just call everything hell, you know, but these places are not hell. Um, uh, let me see the word that was used. Um, by the writer, um, um, you see, he used the word Tartarus. He says the abyss, you know. Um, so they usually um, uh, just use anything hell. So now even Jesus, when he was speaking about a simple uh, place where they throw waste, you know, um, what did they call that place? They also called the, our Bibles, they just interpret everything to hell. But remember, um, um, uh, when, when someone is speaking their own language and then you have to interpret it to your own language, you're gonna find the closest thing that you know in your own language because probably there is not such a term you know so you see the greeks will use the word hades you saw you saw hades there that's one 
and the English will use, you know, um, you see this word Hades, you know, uh, so they have to, to use something from their own, from their own um, paganism. Because that's why how people will understand. Because now, if someone is saying Shaol, what are you going to say in English? You don't know what you know. If someone's going to say Tatars, um, you know, what what is the English going to say? Because this was not written in English. So you find the closest thing that your people, your English people, know. So um, the English people they believed in these halos and and everything and. I've discussed, um, you know, that personified goddess, you know, Helos and Hell. Uh, same thing with the Hades, the Greeks. They believe there is um, a god called Hades, uh, the brother to Zeus. Um, who is in charge of a place underneath the earth here called Hades as well. So these names are actually the personified names as well of the place and the and the false deity, you know. So hell is also a person, and then it's also the area. Hades is also that guy, and it's also that he's a king of of that wicked underworld. And you find that they've got fires and everything there. So when these things come into into us now, people bring in their own paganism, and they. They bring their culture, and by the time the gospel is coming to us, we are, we already got all these um, false things, like there's hell and fire. I mean, there's fire in hell and what, what, what. But this is coming from from Western paganism and and um, mythologies and all that stuff. You know, the Jews they don't know. You you tell a Jew that there's some fireplace in hell, and he's gonna laugh at you. Where you know. Um, what the Jews understand and what Peter Wool knows that is a place of gloom and darkness. Uh yeah, uh, continue. If he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of, of righteousness, with seven others when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. If by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemn them to, extin to extinction, making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. And if he rescued righteous Lot, a greatly distressed, greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked, of the wicked, for as that for as that righteous man left among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over the lawless deeds that he saw and heard. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. And especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passion and despise authority, bold and willful, they do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones. Whereas angels, though greater in might and power, do not pronounce a, blas a blasphemous judgment against them before the Lord. But these, like irrational animals, creatures of instinct, born to be caught and destroyed, blaspheming about matters of which they are ignorant, will also be destroyed in their destruction, suffering wrong as the wage of their wrongdoing. They counted pleasure to revel in the daytime. They are, they are blots and blemishes, reveling in their deceptions while they feast with you. They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed, accursed children. Forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing, but was rebuked for his own trans transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These are waterless springs and mist driven by a storm. For them, the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved. For speaking loud boasts of folly, they entice by sensual passions of the flesh those who are barely escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves, slaves of corruption. For whatever overcomes a person, to that he is enslaved. For if they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. 
and the last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it, to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. What the true prophet says has happened to them. The dog returns to his own vomit, and the soul, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mire. Yeah. So now, Peter starts to go deep about uh, this, um, this was teachers that, look, uh, God is going to take them. Um, let's use the, the word that we, we are used to. Uh, hell is going to punish them uh, because if he did not spare even the people from the first world, uh, billions of people and just saved one person, uh, you know, and now he's also giving the believers um, on how they need to behave uh, in order for them also as well to be saved. Uh, you must remain like Noah. You must be like... Um, you must also be like, uh, like Lord, you know, when all this uh, wickedness is happening around, um, you know, you cannot be happy. You cannot be. It, it must. It must distress you when you see people living in sin, when you see false teachers uh, teaching wrong things. You know, you are there in the churches where where you are watching the TV. This stuff should 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 help you. So even though God is going to destroy them, like all this Sodom and Gomorrah and all this stuff, you know, um, you we, you will be rescued, um, you know. But for now, you're going to have to <laughs> live with them. But these people, they indulge in sexual um, uh, immoralities and all of these things. Everything goes. Remember, you know, you're allowed to, you know, the, the body is nothing. You know, um, it's everything's about the spirit. The body means nothing, you know. Uh, and, um, but you shouldn't be like that, you know. Uh, there's another part as well. They, I mean, they, Jude is going to give more details about this because Peter uh, doesn't give much more uh, details. So we'll read about these angels and the glorious ones, Um even, even even in Jude, because this whole chapter here, it's actually Jude, <laughs> this whole chapter here. So we're going to um, uh, read more, more more of this, but you can see what is happening in, in, in churches, man. You know, there's all these funny people. These days, there's even this new one called Pastor November or whatever, he dresses like a woman. Uh, they do funny things and, you know, and we were just resting from all these uh, false teachers and things, you know. They will go and teach the word and they will be touching women's private parts and they sleep with whoever to heal them or to get demons out. And it's it's a whole um, messy thing. And there's, there's also hyper grace, you know. And besides hyper grace and another wickedness here because they are greedy people here. They've got uh, pro they preach prosperity gospel, you know, uh, and they've like like Balaam, you know, they 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 they, they, they are, people are led astray, you know. Uh, people like to hear those sort of things, but if God did not spare him and he dealt with him using a donkey, he's not going to spare all these people. Uh, all these things may might sound whatever, but it's madness. It's it's waterless springs, you know. So I love the language that he also uses them. Uh, now these people are liberals. Uh, we've got a lot of that today. Liberal Christianity. You can dress anyhow. You can do anything. You can eat anything. You can go anywhere. You know. Uh, they're being told that, that Jesus has liberated us. But look, uh, at the end of the day, people are being slaves of corruption. Uh, you know, I was also thinking about this one because like we're liberals, we can we can drink, we can do whatever, but you know, I think there has to be, um, there has to be a line. There has to be, you know, uh, if you end up now being a slave, uh, of corruption and, and all of that, some way, somehow, something's not right. 
with our Christianity and what, what we're learning. Uh, you know, we need to repent. And what is worse is that, look, um, uh, since these people, they've once, you remember that false teachers, like false prophets, all false prophets were actually um, God's prophets. You know, they're not like someone who was just being sent by the devil or someone who's not uh, a God. They're not like Balaam. You see, Balaam is not even a prophet. He's not even called a prophet because he's, but he's got all those magics and all those things. You know, he was outside of Israel. But the true, the false prophets are actually the prophets that were working for God. But as we have seen in, in the Tanakh, they change things. They start prophesying to tell people nice things, what they want, want what they want to hear, like like what they when they told um uh, King Ahab, you know, four hundred of them, you know, lying, and only Micah and Elijah will, will will not compromise. But those are actually God's prophets. All false prophets in the Bible, they're actually God's prophets who just choose to prophesy um falsely. That's what makes them, you know. So now even these teachers, you know, you find that they were they were real Christians, they were, you know, but they just are led astray because this stuff, when you do this stuff, you're gonna when you preach these sort of things, prosperity, whatever, uh, hyper grace, you know, people are gonna come, you're gonna have a mega church, you, you, you know. And some of these guys, I mean, they knew the truth. And this is why it's very dangerous as well to be to be a preacher, because now you become as worse as um, than than you were, unsavable. You know, you are returning back to your to to the vomit, to 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 eat the the same. So it's very hard. They are almost these sort of people, um, unsavable. So we need to be to be very careful that when we are hearing. Uh, the truth and then we are not like I've seen people who have joined all these Bushiri churches and stuff coming from where from churches where they they were preaching the truth those people are no longer savable if you know that the right way and you choose to be enticed by something that it's that sounds nice and great and it's liberal and it's, it's empowering and all these things motivational God is gonna let you go you know, you are going back to, to 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 the world, which is just Christianized to give you all of these things, and you can do all of these things with the cap of a Christian. You are never gonna, you are, you are not going to be savable. We have read in Thessalonians actually that God actually allows you, you know, so that these things might even even destroy. They it allows you to go with the with the the, the delusions. Because you're denying that the way, the right way, and then you're choosing to follow that because it suits you. Or at this church, they don't preach the things that I want. I'm gonna go and find a church which, which you know, uh, preach the things that I want. I don't want to hear uh, women don't cannot preach or whatever. You know, I'll go somewhere where, where it's more liberal. Or I don't want a, a place where they don't. Every week they're preaching holiness and whatever, man. We know, man. You know, you want hyper grace. You'll go. The God will lead. Will let you. And once you have known that the right way, and then you choose that the God, the Bible says, brings more delusion so that you may be destroyed. You know, uh, you're going back to. Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can continue. Uh, yeah, the last chapter. This is now the second letter I'm writing to you, beloved. In both of them, I'm stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the predictions of the holy prophets and commandments of the Lord and Savior through your apostles. Knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. They will say, where is the promise of his, of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlooked this fact that the heavens existing, existed long ago and the earth was formed by, out, by, out of water and through water by the word of God. And that by means of these, of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. 
but by the same word, the heavens and the earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the with the Lord one day, that that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought to be in would to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of the, of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Yeah, so um Again, the day of the Lord. Uh, we've discussed the day of the Lord uh, a lot, <laughs> uh, and most of this stuff that he's saying, uh, they're actually um, even uh, given in detail in the Book of Revelation. Uh, but we are looking forward for 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 the coming of the Lord, and the day of the Lord, and the day of the Lord encompasses um, the unrighteous. They're going to be destroyed. Uh, by fire. So we have discussed as well that look, uh, because the, our Bibles like to use this word hell for everything, there is going to be a place which I think that's the proper place to call hell the way the way that we are. It's called a lake of fire. That at the end of the day, all the unrighteous, you know, and the devils and all these things, they're going to be thrown into that fire. Uh, and the, and there is going to be a new heavens and a new earth. Uh, this one is going to be destroyed because it's already defiled. Uh, and then God is going to relocate to the new earth. Uh, and then there won't be a sun. God is going to get rid of, even of the sun, but God is going to be the sun even on that um, new 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 earth. Uh, and that's what we look forward to uh, salvation on that day. But a lot of people have been saying, ah, uh, uh, scoffers, you know, what? oh, there's a war, wars in what, what, uh, there's been wars to, throughout, you know, doesn't mean that the world is coming to an end. Uh, there have been earthquakes even bigger than this. Yes, it's true. But people are just scoff, scoffing and deliberately, you know, uh, and to make people um not to look forward to, to 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 the coming of Christ you know because you know it's like life is about now you see this is why these people even they're preaching it's it's about now you know John Elston even wrote a book called your best life now and if we don't get these catchy titles of books you know people don't buy people want all these things uh, about now and how great you can be, how empowered you can be, all these, all these things. Forget about the coming of Christ as, as the main goal, because when you're looking forward to the coming of Christ, you're also avoiding to end in hell. It's there's nothing guaranteed, you know. So you need to live uh, a holy life. Uh, you know, you should, should, we should continually repent. You know, uh, and then he also mentioned that look, uh, all this time, you know, yes, uh, when these things were preached a thousand years ago, about 2000 years ago, it felt like, look, it's going to happen now. So scoffers will be saying, ah, these things have been, they've been saying for 2000 years, I man, come on, come on, you know. But what this man now uh, in this famous line, uh, you know, a, 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 a thousand years is like a day, you know, to God, you know. So the 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 context, if you're reading the context properly here, it's it's talking about patience. You know that when God is looking at all these sins and all these wicked things that are happening, He's being slow to 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 anger and He's, he's being patient because He wants 
he's trying to save the others you know but he wanted he wants to destroy the the, the, the all this wickedness like he did with that uh, first world with with water he wants to end this thing he hates sin god is holy he cannot stand one day of watching the wickedness that is happening in the world today you know and he's going to come like that on them because like that old world they were still enjoying partying and doing all these things and you know and it just happened in a day but what is making him to continue suffering watching all these things you know um it's the patient because he wants people to be saved he does not want anyone to end up in hell and perish you know so we must have a look at it when god is giving us all this grace and all these um the great man and, and, and his, 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 his patience, you know, we shouldn't see it as a way to continue doing wrong, you know, but to, to repent and, and not be like them who don't want to repent. Um, to them, he's going to come like, like a thief in the night, you know, and destruction is guaranteed. People don't want to believe in the end of the world and all these things. Uh, they, they make us think like, um, no, this this these people are just scaring us. These church people, uh, religion is just making people fear fearful. So people don't even preach about hell anymore. Meanwhile, the devil, I mean, uh, 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 Yeshua, preached uh, about hell a lot, and the devil does not want uh, this truth to be. And it's part of of the gospel. It's that important. When we lose our fear for hell and the end of the world and all this stuff. We just live anyhow. And that's why we'll tend to go to all these false pro pro teachers who will tell us all these nice things. Their job is just to delusion us, is, is to uh, numb us to the truth about uh, the wages of sin and, uh, and the patience of God and the grace that is giving us, you know, to just believe that ah, then it's fine, man. Uh, you know, you do this wrong thing, you, you know, it eats you the first day and then, you know, you don't repent, you continue and and then you get a preacher who makes you feel good on Sunday and, you know, and makes everything about now and you're not thinking that um, there are consequences, guys. We are, we are in some serious uh, <laughs> tough books. These books, when you read them, they really... Um, uh, what's the word? They really convict you, you know. And guys, yeah, we we need. We're in the world. We're not of the world. Uh, yeah. Let's let's yeah. Let's finish up. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by Him without spot or blemish and in peace, and count the patience of our Lord His salvation just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given, given him, as he does in all his letters when he speaks in them of these matters. There are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. You, therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of, law of lawless people and lose your own stability but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, Paul's letters are a problem. Uh, this is why Gnostics actually, Gnostics, they, uh, because <laughs> the Tanakh um, deals with sin, uh, they rejected uh, the first Bible that was even compiled uh, it was con co compiled by a Gnostic called um, Marcion uh, and Marcion uh, removed the Tanakh uh, and he took Luke's gospel and all these things and Paul's letters only he removed James. He, he does not want James. He does not want Peter. 
does not want Jude, does not, uh, Revelation is the most hated book, you know, because it's showing God punishing sin. All this stuff that speak about against sin, they don't, they don't want. Because Paul's letters are very easy to twist and preach hyper grace and, and, and preach uh, license to sin. Grace is licensed to sin. They are very easy, you know. Uh, so this is why even in today's churches, you know, uh, false teachers, they're very good. They want something to, to... I remember um, Kenneth Hagin um, used to twist uh, Galatians. Uh, and he will say, um, uh, preaching that when you're not supposed to be sick, um uh and you but you're supposed to be rich uh because that's a blessing of Abraham uh and we have now received the blessing of Abraham we're supposed to be rich and then you'll go and show how Abraham rich was uh and um the first time now when I decided to read the scriptures on my own I'm reading that Galatians. I'm like, uh -uh, no. You know, that's not what the blessing of Abraham is. It's not his riches. Because that man now started this prosperity gospel from twisting Galatians. Then came all his disciples, Bo Krefno Dola, Bo Kenneth Complaint. And that's who drove all of these churches that we have today here, and it was just prosperity gospel. That's where we come from. That's our background, um, you know. Uh, and based on twisting those kind of scriptures. But when you read um, Galatians, you realize that, no, the blessing of Abraham is faith. It's receiving, it's righteousness. It's receiving righteousness by faith alone, without works, you know. And this is the new way. It's actually the old way which Jesus has returned that you now you no longer need to, um, you know, because those Galatians, the, the Judaizers, so-called Judaizers, those people that we studied a lot about, they were saying, no, you still need to do this, perform circumcision and do that for you to be righteous. And said, no, even Abraham did not do those things. You know, he received righteousness through faith. And even you, you know, you, you 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 can receive. You have received that blessing of Abraham. You know, because by only believing in Jesus, all your sins um, are forgiven, and uh, and you receive righteousness. That that was it. But how they twist those scriptures and make it about, hey, Abraham is rich. The Jews are rich. Well, we are also supposed to be rich. We're supposed to be multi-millionaires. Hey, wait, wait. You see, you know. Um, but they're doing that to their own uh, distractions. So we pray for them uh, because some of them, um, you know, they they were just um, they were just um, deceived by this evil spirit. God does send these other teachers to show them the scriptures. Uh, Benny Hinn also tried to. Uh, uh, to repent as well from from that false gospel that they've been preaching, but people, the whole the cycle is gonna turn against them and start attacking them. So, yeah, but let's pray that they repent. Uh, we are all wicked people, so we're not judging them um, and condemning them because these books they don't teach us to condemn those people but to correct uh, the teaching. And I'm just using those as examples um, for us to, to understand. But just as we're saved and we're deceived, uh, we pray that God also help them. Now, we are going to read this, which is just the same as chapter two of Second Peter. So, um, but here there's more detail. So, um, um, you'll notice Jude Yates calling himself a servant of Jesus Christ, you know, while what Peter, they add that they are apostles and everything. So people were, some people will have issues with Jude 
an apostle, whatever. No, he is an apostle because he has seen, um, like his brother Jane, they were not the first disciples, they were one of the twelve, but but they've actually have seen uh the resurrected Jesus and he has given them a message. Uh, and that made them apostles and they are authoritative like Paul. You see. Um yeah. I thought I should say that. Uh yeah, you can start from From way verse three. Yeah, oh yeah, you can start anyway, it's fine. Okay. Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to those who are called, beloved in God the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write, appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation. Ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to remind you, although, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And all the angels who did not stay within oh, their own position. Mm -hmm. Something that I didn't notice when I was reading this. Um, Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. Um, did Jesus go and save people in the land of Egypt? Yes, he did. Didn't he with the because remember they marked um the doorposts with the blood of the lamb? Yes. And so I mean the the thing is that the angel of death skipped all those homes that had the mark of the lamp of their doorposts, and the blood of the lamb was Jesus. So didn't he save them from that? But the blood of the lamb was not was not um was not Jesus' blood. It was those lambs. Uh, and but let me also let me also isn't a lamb a symbol of the blood of God? Yeah, but you were not talking about. Uh, uh, you see, you are you are you are going back to that uh, Bible interpretation of um. Yeah, yeah you, you know, let's not yeah, let's not do that one. You also mentioned something that the angel of death. We don't have the angel of death in the Bible. Since those things that I keep saying, if you read something outside of the the Bible, it's hard now to remember which is which, and you just you know, the angel of death. You'll find these sort of things in those um, um, books that are not in the Bible, but we don't have the angel of death. What was he called? Because that is key. Um, it's manga. I, I what was he called? He was not called, called the angel of. I can't remember. Oh, anymore. It's key. Oh. We've discussed him a lot. Anybody? The angel of the it's Lord. Not the angel of death. Yes, guys. Guys, you cannot. <laughs> Guys, don't kill me. We're, we're almost... Sorry, I, I missed this. Who are you referring to? Uh, the angel that went in Egypt and and skipped every door that had the blood and he killed everyone that did not have. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Guys, we have discussed the angel of the Lord many, many times. He's the most important character in the whole Bible, in the whole Tanakh, the angel of the Lord. 
because that's Jesus himself. We have discussed it, we've given examples, we've shown, we've proved beyond doubt that it is actually Jesus. And to, to today, I, I'm not going to go back to that. But remember, in this year about Egypt, uh, Yahweh himself, Jesus himself, he said, he told um, uh, Moshe that he's actually going to come and destroy and save these people. And even when I was telling them to put the blood on their doorpost, he said, I'm going to come and pass anywhere uh, where there's blood. You know, So it was Jesus who went in through and killed. And those who are with us when you're doing revelation, we understand, you know, it's his, it's his job. He's an executor of, of, of God's judgment. He's the one who's coming coming back to destroy all the, the wicked people here and save his people. This is why um uh that's what the day of the lord is all about and this yes it is like a, another form of um uh a shadow of 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 the day of the lord uh and remember he's called an angel of the lord an angel is also assigned to um to a certain nation so the jews they've got um michael and they also have um yeshua as their angel you know, he's, 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 he's the one that um, you'll see uh, is, is being sent. An angel is a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a messenger, you know. So he's, he's the one that does do all these things. He delivers them. He comes, he, you know, he's their personal um, angel uh, as well as Michael. Um, so this is why as we have been crafted in his author now our angel you know uh, so so yes he did save them uh, he's the one who came in and took them out uh, yeah um, yeah let's continue and the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, serve as an example by, undergo by undergoing a punishment of eternal life, eternal fire. Yet, in in like ma in like manner, these people also, relying on their on their dreams, defile the flesh, reject authority, and blaspheme the glorious ones. But when the archangel Michael, contending with the devil, was disputing about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a blasphemous judgment, but said, "The Lord, the Lord rebuke you." But these people blaspheme all that all that they do not understand, and they are destroyed by all that they, they, like unreasoning animals, understand instinctively. Woe to them, for they walked in the way of Cain and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain to Balaam's error and perished in Korah's rebellion. These are hidden reefs of at your love feast, as they feast with you without fear, shepherds feeding themselves, waterless clouds swept along by winds, Fruitless trees in late autumn, twice dead, uprooted. Wild waves of the sea, casting upon, casting up the foam of their own shame. Wandering stars, for whom the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved forever. It was also about these that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires. They are loud-mouthed boasters, showing favoritism to gain advantage. Yeah, so it's... <laughs> So you can see that it's the same content uh, as what we read in Second Peter then, you know, and it's more, it's got more information. Um, 
you know, uh, 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 but there are, these people are actually dealing with the same kind of people. We don't know at least who Jude is writing to, uh, but you can see that the church is under attack by these um, perverts that even pervert the grace of God. They, they've got the hyper grace and, you know, they're undermining the person of Jesus. Um, but he's saying that no, this very same Jesus is coming to destroy them like he destroyed all of those places. And you remember, it was also Jesus who came and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, he's, 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 that, he's, that, he's that guy. He's, he's, he's the angel of the Lord. You remember when he came in, um, when he's going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, which, by the way, we also get more detail here that there were surrounding cities. We thought we also thought it was only Sodom and Gomorrah that went down, but all those surrounding cities that were defined by sexual immorality. You know, so there's no way when God is watching all these sexual immoralities and all these uh, unnatural desires, you know, this is homosexuality. It's the same thing as you know, what, what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah, all these trans and what, what, all LGBTQ, you know, and God is looking at this, he's just, you know, he's just feeling the pain. Meanwhile, he's holding back just for us to be, to be saved. And until that number of, of um, Gentiles reached, a lot of this, God is just going to hold himself. But the angel of the Lord, Jesus himself is ready. He's the one who comes to deal with all this all the time. You know, so you remember when he came in to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he spoke to uh to Abraham, uh, and he said to Abraham, um, uh, you know, uh or actually Abraham asked, if I find 50 people who are righteous there, are you going to destroy it? And he uh and Jesus said, no. Um, and then he says, oh, pardon me, my Lord. Uh, if you find 20, and then he kept the, And then you remember that that time, um, Abraham stopped calling him, or, or the, the one that was writing. They started calling him the Lord. They stopped calling him the angel of the Lord. He just started calling him the Lord. And even when Sarah uh, loved at 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 the um uh, the prophecy, you know, uh, it was that said that you no, know, she was laughing. She loved God, at God, you know. Um, but yeah, that's him, and he's coming back to do the very same thing, um, in the lasting in the last days. On during the day of the Lord, but now something very strange is being written here, which is very it's a bit difficult. Um, about the uh, Michael contending with the body of um of of Moshe with uh, with the Satan. Um, uh, but to you know, I've already we've already discussed this thing of sources. Uh, I think this is coming from yeah the ascension of of motion. Uh, but then the point that is making here is that um, even Michael respected uh, the Satan. The Satan, we are not hundred percent sure of what kind of creature he is, but we we when we're doing Isaiah as a girl, we. We ended up um, uh, drawing. Uh, I think that is probably a, um, uh, what do you call those um, holy ones that have got many sure. wings and the living creatures? Eh? Sure. Yeah, the cherub. So it's a cher Yeah, so it's like a, a cherub. And uh, the cherubs are very close to uh, to Yahweh, and as, as we have seen uh, even there in Ezekiel, as well as we have studied in Revelation, they you know they 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 they, they are around the throne. Them, uh, so he must be someone who 
who is of high um uh, rank uh this uh the satan uh because archangel archangel michael is also of high rank but he respects he respects the satan and he, he could not even rebuke the satan and rather he just said um the lord rebukes rebukes him so this is the this is the the another thing that these people this they don't care you know these false teachers they they don't see anything um they um they're not even afraid of 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 angels they're not even afraid of of um i mean we are nothing compared to angels we these these are higher beings guys you know even the satan you need to give him the respect that he deserves you know, as a higher being, you know, kind of be going around and bind you, Satan. Oh, 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 oh this who are you? How can you bind a higher being like that? You know, but they love that they um, you know, it's 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 even when they are praying, you know, people why are you addressing the devil in prayer and you are busy with the devil and you know, leave the devil, it's not your your your, your problem. The only thing that we're told to do, you know. Uh, even Yeshua respected him. You never found Yeshua saying some um, things, and you know, no, he respected him. He even called him the God of this world, you know. And in all cases, when he was addressing um, the devil, he, he it was with with respect, you know. Um, but people who don't care, people who want, you know, they want to tell us that, oh, step on the devil, oh, me, me, and all these things. But these are glorious beings. They're higher than us, you know. So I think this is the point that he's making to say, look, these people are, they're like animals. They're the way they are, they're, they're unreasonable. They just, they don't have respect for anything, you know. Um, as we're told when we pray, we just pray to, to our father and that he must protect us from the evil one and that's what yeshua as well prayed and also said when he was praying himself that we need to be protected from you know those beings they are powerful they they are given whatever authority you see they go even him the satan he goes there he speaks to the even the, the lord respects him you know he goes there anytime and they have discussions, you know. Hey, where, where, where are you? Where are you coming from? What are you up? Okay, do this. Okay, I'm allowing you to do this. You know, they hold meetings. Then he even suggests to 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 go in and and kill uh, Ahab by by through false prophecy. You know, so you cannot just come and attack the devil and you know, and. And make him like you say, you know, he's gonna be dealt with. The revelation tells us, you know, he's dealt with by angels, by one angel, by the one. You know, for now it's not really our problem, it's the Lord's problem. As we speak to the Lord. You know, but these ones and they are false gospels, you know, they're busy going out there, they're making all this deliverance, what, 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 and they spend time discussing the devils and everything and and you know, not our place. As the gospel is here, it's in the Bible. You don't find those things. You know, here it's about it's about Yeshua. It's about um, it's about God. It's about the other believers loving one another. It's about uh, righteousness and living a holy life, so we will be saved even on the day of the Lord. Um, yeah. Let's continue and finish. Which so I also all, all of these other people who behaved in a certain manner, and I can see added Cain as well, um, you know, and Cora, that such people look such false false teachers. Look, it doesn't take time, you know. And now here it's also about um respecting uh, even authority, uh, even false teachers as well. Uh, but if they're in a place of authority. So now this is one mistake I also used to make. 
you know, um, because you find that some other people are elders. They are old and we're Africans and, and we are also children of the God of God. So there must be a way, even if you are addressing someone who is who's in error, you know, you treat them with respect because they are elders, you know, uh, and you don't make the mistakes like what Kora did and God punished him for that, you know, uh, and um, and all these people that lead people, others astray or they hurt others and whatever. Um, let me continue to read so that we don't we also don't get confused when I'm when I'm discussing. Let me finish this. And these are hidden reefs at your love feast. Uh, they feast with you without fear. Shepherds feeding themselves waterless clouds. You see now it's giving more details than than Jude. Now we are seeing that these people are actually pastors. You know they you know. Uh, and he's using all these lovely language <laughs> or poetic language to really insult uh, them where they are you know so it also say it is also about this that Enoch said but then we like when did Enoch say these things you know so it's one of those things because um nothing like this uh Enoch said uh but Enoch actually dealt with ungodly people so they were false preachers even even during that that uh, world, um, and God will send his um, his preachers to preach the truth, and that look the end of the world is coming. The end of the world is coming, but it was already even prophesied to Matulza. Uh, what? H? Am I pronouncing it right, Matulza? What? What is? Enoch's great grandfather, our uh, grandfather. Uh, but it was all, yeah, they already knew that. Look, um, uh, Enoch's uh, grandson, um, uh, Noah, it, all this stuff will happen during the time of Noah. Uh, it should be. Um, where do they give the genealogy? Um, oh no, let me just go to Matthew to make it easier because we need to know these guys, man. Um, Uh, where, where does it start? Oh, it starts from... Oh, this one is starting from from Abraham. Um, it should be Luke then. I think Luke goes a little bit backwards. Um, um, I, okay. <laughs> hey, I, for, I even forgot where that genealogy is. Um, yeah, I'm losing it anyway. But anyway, um, uh, we understand that, yeah, it happened during the time of Enoch, but before that, before Noah, there were a lot of people that God will be sending to preach and preach and preach. But God is so good. We just read recently, I think from, was it from First Peter, that um, Jesus actually even went to preach to those people um, when he, uh, when he, after he, after he died on the cross, you know, but before Christ, you see, yeah, during that time, God sent a lot of, of prophets to preach to them, but they did not listen. But um, just as it has happened, uh, they also had false prophets. They also had false teachers. You know, uh, there are people who who make you feel better about um, the time that we're living now, and they lead people to ungodliness. So these are grumblers and everything we've read that. But you, you must remember. So now here, here's that thing. 
because all this time when I'm reading this, I'm like, okay, you're telling us about all these false teachers and things, but what do you want us to do? You know, because now you're saying that, look, we can't even speak against them uh, if they are like, you know, people of high positions or whatever, or if they are, we can't even say things against angels. You know, so now what do we, what do we do to them? You know, all these coffers and, you know. Um, and then he says something that Peter also said there, and then he says, you know, uh, in these last days, and again, following people will do this in this. They cause divisions. They are worldly people, you know, uh, devout of the spirit. So they're not really of God. But you, beloved, there it comes. So as we must remember what the apostles have said, so when we're seeing all these false teachers and cult leaders and everything, we must remember that no scripture has told us that these people will come and they'll follow their own ungodly passions and greed and all this stuff. Uh, but we must build ourselves. As we must build ourselves through faith in the Holy Scriptures. You know, we must read, read, do what we are doing. As we don't spend too much time, uh, and I'm glad that God has helped me. You know, you know this thing of like what the people do. Um, what do you call this? A lot of people uh, in in social media and YouTube. YouTubers, they spend every single day attacking all these false prophets, you know, uh, and they will say it is um, apologetics. Apologetics is good, you know, but um, we need to spend much more time in studying scriptures. That's why I stopped doing a lot of videos and doing those things and spending much more time to do these scriptures and praying in the Holy Spirit, guys. Because, you know, we usually don't even know how to pray for. But when you're praying in spirit, the Holy Spirit gives you something to pray about. And, you know, um, again, there is the love of God. You know, it's all about love, loving one another, guys. You know, we should be now this this World Cup happening. I mean, we should be watching World Cup together, you know, and loving one another. It's It bothers me that we don't we don't have that. As now we are supposed to be sitting with non-believers and, you know, it's like, where are the believers? Where is that love? Where is that unity? Because this is what we should focus ourselves. And this is in response to um, the false teachers and stuff. We form our own thing. We pray all the time. We pray for one another. We keep the faith that we find in the scriptures. We study the scriptures and we love one another and we have this and most importantly, we are actually looking forward uh, to the coming of, of the Lord. And we don't even take, um, uh, we don't undermine his, um, his grace as well. And we must also have mercy on the people that have got little faith. Uh, and let's pray for one another, but let's help one another. Let's go and and you can see someone is falling, someone is weak, someone, you know, let's not judge and condemn one another. But as we are stronger, let's be gentle. Let's, let's snatch them, you know, from uh, from the hands of the wicked one who's going to end up sending them to hell. You know, you see me doing something wrong or something, you know, come, love me. You know, um, let's keep each other accountable, let's love one another. This, this, this is what Christianity is all about. Um, uh, now to him that is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of the glory, of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all uh, time and now and forever. Amen. Uh, yeah, so I think today we um we are on time and yeah, we managed to study these two books. Um, and yeah, um, 
I will now open up a room for um, uh, for any discussion, any question, any comment. Um, are we all clear? Are we all? Hi. Hi. Uh, I must say that is, uh, these classes have been clarifying scripture for me. I, I I wouldn't have thought or even wondered what heavenly bodies are or what it means within the Bible. So yeah, thank you for making that clear uh, or rather explaining it better and putting it in context. Every time mm -hmm. now when I read I understand, uh, even though, you know, the context or the, the wording may not be having the bodies or whatever, you know, I, I, I would mm. understand it better. And also, I think Jude is also ch touching a bit on, on what we read on Ephesians, uh, you know, putting on the armor to say it cannot be us who's fighting the devil. Um, mm. And as you said, we see this. Arch Michael. Yeah. Oh wow. Wow. That that is very impressive. Yo, that is very good. And I like how you also connected this to um, uh the special that we did on Ephesians 6, you know, where we understand that look, we we don't even fight the devil, you know, that armor is not our armor, it's actually God's armor, and he's the one who you know who fights. And it's it's true, man. You know, when we have studied this stuff, even when you encounter, you know, words, glorious, you know, when you just hear the word glory, you understand that it's also about a heavenly, heavenly body, and you know, and yeah, it becomes much more easier. Thank you for for that. Uh, Maureen, you wanted to say something. Uh, who's Zoom? No, 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 it doesn't mean. Um, someone I don't see the name, but it, it's it's Zoom user. Um, or maybe it's mine. Hey, you know, <laughs> but mine is a number there. I don't know who Zoom user is. Um, yeah. Uh, any any more comment? Uh, it's already five now. Uh, we should be closing. Hey, today no, no comments and questions. Only one. All right. Um. Uh, yeah, you may as well close for us in prayer, Maureen. Uh, 